How's it going? So, we're gonna be building a shopping cart. A very, very quick one. So, this is what it's going to look like. This is gonna be the shop, and that's gonna be our shopping cart. So, we can put items into it. It's gonna have unique ID. And then we add the items, and we're gonna have a cart total as well. We're gonna use a use reducer. Oh, not the reducer, but use context for this. Uh, we, you don't need to do that, but I'll do it for practice purposes, all right? So let's start probably. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to get data from here. Let's use fetch method to do that. And um, okay, so. Okay, so we're not going to use use reducer for this. Okay, so first thing we do is with the const, we're going to create a all data set, all data. Use state. That's right now. It's going to be an empty array, right? So then we need to create You don't have to use those separators, but I do it myself all the time. And we're gonna use axios for this. <laughs> oh, whoopsie. Huh, it's actually Axios. That's really funny. So Axios is just fetch. Only most people use Axios because the coding, you have to type less. But Axios and fetch are exactly the same. So we need to import Axios, I think, right? Mm, let me just do this. I already have kind of pre-made code. The tool I use is called Dito. So we import Axios, right? We don't need the reducer. And this is actually our fetch data function already pre-made for us. Yeah, so I can just copy and paste it in here. And then we're gonna use, we're gonna call this on our start. <laughs> Sorry for yawning so many times. I've just done this so many times. I'm a pro, what can I say? I'm a bleeding professional. All right, so we put the URL in here, I think, right? Console, we don't need console of data. What we do is we gonna use this. To data. So <laughs> you can probably see the fetch code straight away. Response, await, fetch, you put in your URL, then let data equal to whatever the fetch um, gives out. And then you just put in fetch, 
uh, response.json, right, in the fetch code. But in here, you do slightly differently. You say response await axios.get URL. So this returns the data. Let data await whatever is in here, dot data. Dot data is the same as dot JSON. And then this will give you the effect that you're looking for. It's, this is standard Axios code. Let's see if the data has been loaded. NPM start. I'll move on to the next task. So we need to create a button that has either go to cart or back to shop. All right. So you see, we need to have go to cart, back to shop, right? So we need to switch between them. And the shop and the cart are going to be two separate components. We're loading so far. Boy, what the hell is going on here? Yeah, because I forgot to import the context, that's why. Import. Use global. Uh, from. So what I'm doing is I'm importing the um, use export state into our app component, right? Equals, and then I'm like uh, destructuring it straight away. <laughs> no, I can just console log it. We'll see if the access worked. Okay, so there is an issue somewhere in here. One second. Okay, so I realized what the problem was. The problem was I did not um, activate my provider. I did not wrap my app provider, so it was operating without it. That's why use context was not working in my app, right? But now all is good. We can console log data and it works. You see, we can we can see the data. Kernel is already registered. Dude, I don't know what those uh, errors are. Anyway, yellow errors in React are not uh, scary. Okay, so now we have the data, right? We need to create a state for 
icons display shop or display cart. So we're going to put display cart set display cart use state false. All right. We're going to need both of them. I'll put them in here. I'll put them in here. All right, so we need a button. Here, button. The code is going to be display cart. If display cart is true, so if display cart is true, we want to go back to the shop, right? So back to shop. Else, go to cart. And then we're going to put cart items in here. Let's say four, like this. You know what I'll do? I'll, I'll put some to body adding with the 40 pixels. As you see, otherwise it's going to be like stuck in here, and I don't want that. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So now we need two components, right? I go eat and come back one sec. Okay, I'm back. So we need two components and we're going to create them. Let's just do this. So this is cart. Shop judges. Hmm. Okay, so we need to import them. Okay, we need to put them in here, I think. All right. Art, and then we need. And you don't really have to do that. You can do that everything in the same component, but I mean, you can do it this way as well. So we're going to have two things in here. So So the button needs to have an on-click event. On-click. And then we need to set display card to opposite of display card. So when you do opposite to current state, it can it creates a toggle effect. 
So you see, uh, we can click. We see how it works. Oh, cool. I just realized if you move this thing in Vidyard, the pause and whatever it's called, pause and uh, stop, the controller appears, which is pretty good. Okay, so now we need to create... We don't need all that in here, we can just use. So inside the cart, we need to create, what do we need to create? We need to create this button so you can add it into the cart. All right. So we need to go to the shop. And then we need data. And, oh, whoopsie. Oh, whoopsie. Use global. Now we have access to the data. Now let's just iterate through it. All data for each. Value index, let's do this way. You can use map or for each, it doesn't matter. In this case, it, it will work identical. All right, so what's inside? We need to this structure. Okay, so what's inside the data? Let's just have a look what's inside the data. So we need ID, title, price, image. Amount we're not gonna do. So ID, title, price, image. Now let's just display this return. Div. Remember that when you're iterating, you have to have a key. So we're going to assign ID to the key. And because we're using ID as a, um, we don't need index. Because originally I thought I'm going to assign index to the key. That's what I def by default do. But because we have an ID, we don't need it. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to display image, right? Hmm. Okay, we want to create a class name in here. Equals um, shop item shop item wrap. Let's just do it this way. And then I'm gonna import app CSS into this thing. Because you see, I don't want to create a separate uh, CSS file for this. There's just not enough code to do that. And then we're going to style it. And we're going to have two divs. One is going to be the image. And second one is going to be... Uh, description. Now, the reason why I created this is because uh, I want to use. Honestly, I don't even need style, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even need this shite. I can just do inline styling. Yeah, I can just do inline styling, honestly. There's no need for this at all. 
Yeah, I don't even need to do this. Style equals display flex. Because that's, that's all I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I still want to style the image a little bit. Right, image. The so source is going to be our destructure property. Image. Alternative we're not going to use. I don't think we need description right here. And let's do paragraphs. Need two paragraphs in here. The so name is going to be title, I think, right? And let's put price in here. That's our price. It's just complaining that it um, use global. Uh, use global. It cannot find it because there you go. Interesting, for each did not work. Okay, so for each, for some reason, does not work, use math. Interesting that for each did not work. I wonder why that is. So we have this so far, we just need to make the image just a little bit smaller and add a button. I want to also probably add a horizontal line in here per element, right? Yeah. Yeah, we need it to be.
Mm. The images are a bit too big. I'll just put 100. Yeah, there you go. So now we just need the button. Actually, let's make them 150. Slightly bigger. Yeah. And then we need button. Add to cart. Okay. I'm gonna add a horizontal line on the shop as well, so it's in here. Okay, so this is done. So now we just need to click add to cart, I think, right? And they should be pushing it into an array with items in it, right? So we'll create a function called add to cart. So when I click, what do I want to add? I want to add the name. I want to create a unique ID per item. So we need name, price. Unique ID per item. We can just push the whole item with a click, right? What's the best way to do it? Okay, let's do it this way. Price and name. And so log. This is in use context. Price name. So we're going to export this function into here, get it in here, and then when I click the button, we are going to use this function here, and we're going to push the entire, the content of the individual iteration of the data into the card okay so in theory every time i press it yeah it crashes something i think it should be like this this is the correct way to do it So, 
So this is not name, this is title. That's the problem in here. Try this again. Hmm. So it's receiving the price, but it's not getting the title for some reason. Maybe if I refresh. Oh, it's working now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sometimes have to refresh a couple of times, so it works. So when I click, it's getting the price and it's getting the it's getting the title of the item. All right, so now I need to push all of this into a set card. Okay, so just like for people in comments, I'm I'm making this video kind of for myself, honestly, just so I can, it's fun for me to make video and do it. If you don't understand anything, just ask me. And But this exercise is from John Smilga. Coding Addict, React, Course, and then React uh, Projects. If you do the whole course, you'll be very good at React, and you'll be able to do this project no problem. So we're going to copy the card, and then we're going to add... Then we're going to add – oh, my apologies. This is actually an array, so it should be an array. So we are copying the entire card, and then we are adding ID, which will be new date. Where was the epoch one? Um, maybe I have it in here. Yeah, I have it in here. So we just do this uh, new date. So this is this code gives you how many milliseconds since. I think it's like 1960 or something like that. So, unless you can execute code in less than millisecond, then it will always be unique to your application, of course. Okay, okay, okay. I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. ID we added. Let's do name, which will be title. Actually, now let's just do name, title, and then price will be price. So price comes from here. Yeah, I think that should do it. So now I clicked once, I click let's let me just click everything.
Hmm. Okay, so we can see that the state is changing. This is a React uh, add-on. It's basically called uh, React Developer Tool, I think, or whatever it says. It's like a React add-on. And then you see, we can see states in here. If we go to App Provider, we can see all of our states. Let me just refresh. So, so this is our data loaded. And this is our cart. So if we click, it starts adding. All right. Okay. So now the cart is being populated. Should I export the cart? So now we can go back to our app and we can import the cart. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want to show how many items are inside the cart. So this was in here. Go to cart, template literal, cart dot link. So this will tell us how many items are in there. And we're going to put it in brackets. It'll look better, I think. Okay, you see, so now we're adding into the array. Array displays the length and it changes, you see. So now we need to display items that are inside of our cart. Okay, so let's go to our cart. Let's copy this. Const get the cart out. Use global. So we are now in the cart. All right. So now we want to iterate through cart, cart map, value. In, no, we don't need index on here because I'm going to be using ID as a unique uh, value. Of ID, I think name. What do we have? We have ID, name, and price. Name and price, okay. To value, return. Or to return a div. I mean, I hate when that happens. So let's put um, 
three of those in here. So this will be our ID. Name. Then we need a button like this. Okay, so in theory, if we add some stuff to the shop, okay, so this is being displayed. We want to have total in the cart. And so, final step is to remove from the cart. And then total. Let's do remove from the cart first. So let's add a function. Gonna need an ID, and then this will be like this uh, const filter cart. I'm gonna say cart filter value value ID does not equal to ID. ID is what we pass in here, and then we want to set cart to filtered cart. You can do it this way, or you can just write this whole code right in here. This is just much easier to understand. So now we need to pass a remove card to our previous context. We have to receive it in here and on click is equal to this, like this, like this. And then we're passing the ID here, which comes in and here, filters, and returns the new card, right? So let's add three items, whatever. Yeah, so it's working now. I want to put the items in the cart in here, maybe. Yeah, this card with length. Oh, whoopsie. Oh, no, blank. Man, I need to stop eating cheese and Frankfurter sausages. Man, they have so much cholesterol. My 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 heart is just like literally complaining right now. It is saying, "What the hell is going on? What are you doing?" Just move this around a bit. Okay, so the final thing I need to do is I need to. How long am I doing this for? Holy shit, 45 minutes on this. Oh my god. Oh my god. Why is it so long? Anyway, it doesn't matter. So now I just need to calculate the price. So, what's the best way to do it? Well, let's do this way. Let's 
deserve this for him. First, let's do card. No, I want to. I want to console log a lot of stuff. So I'm gonna do it in here. Let me do it in here. Let total card equals to card dot map. Yeah, let me just map the card right, and only have the price displayed right. Map value value dot price. So it's console log total cart. I just want to see if it's uh, strings or do we have to parse them or not? That's what I want to know. Let me go here. Yeah, you see all of them are strings. You see, so we're gonna have to parse them. Parse float, I think. If you parse int, then we'll get rid of the decimal places. We don't want that. So let's see. Let me just add that. That it doesn't matter. Okay, so now we have our. Um, Now we have our uh, integers, right? So now we need to reduce, reduce this to accumulator value. All right. So accumulator will be zero. We always want to return accumulator. Then accumulator is equal to accumulator plus value. I think like this, right? Right. So now let's see. Yeah. So it's working. Man, what are those errors? Jesus. There you go, you see? Okay, so now we just need to display this with a dollar sign. Let's just put a dollar sign. Oh, shite. We need HTML, HTML, euro sign, code. Let's just do this. So there you go. Okay, we want to avoid that. I think it's uh, like um, two fixed two, I think, like this. Just solve it. So two fixed, um, this is how many decimal places you want. So if you want just one, you put in one, you see? So this is one decimal places because two fixed is one. If we put four, it will give us four. You see, now we have four. So 
normally numbers are in two, so we're gonna do two. All right. Now, ideally, we should honestly make this a function in here and then just make it globally. But I mean, I'm kind of finished the project, so I'll just put it in here as well. Um, into the into the shop because I want the shop to see how much is in there. And I'm just gonna copy and paste this honestly as well. Ideally, you don't want to kind of in programming. You do not want to have a duplicates of code. This is a duplicate of code. This is bad. You don't want to do that, right? But I mean, again, because this is a final step, I, I screw it. I'll just do it in here. Uh, const total in cart, okay? Because I, I don't like breaking the rules of uh, programming, okay? Then we're going to return total card. Actually, I can just do it in here too. Fixed two. So this will give us like a fixed number. And now we want to export this. So you see now we don't have a duplicated code issue. So we just total cart, and we just invoke the total cart because it will return. Once you run the function, it will return us this. All right, so we do, we remove all of this stuff, and I invoke this in here. Whoopsie. Just do this then. I need to pass this in here so it's visible. Yeah, it's complaining because I need to refresh it like. Total cart is not defined. Where is it not defined? Oh, I see. It's total in cart. So there you have it. We probably want to make this a com component. Well, honestly, it doesn't matter because it's it's a function that is reusable. All right. Yeah, pretty much done. Okay, take care.